Hello and welcome back to Bannerlord and our Crusade Carnate focused playthrough. Now, here we are with Byron in another tournament. Now, I have been attempting to figure out how I can get Crusade Noble Sons in my army. And as far as I'm aware, the only way that I can do that is by increasing relation with either villages or towns or somewhere like that where I can actually start recruiting those noble units. And that's going to be... Basically, I, f I would say probably almost impossible in the last nine or so days that I have left, or eight days. But, on the other hand, I've actually changed which lady that we are going to marry going forward. Because I saw a bunch of comments and uh, people were like, hey, you should probably join the Kurgit clan. And I thought to myself, yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. Because obviously, you know, in Warband, there is the Kurgit Carnate, so it kind of makes sense for us to maybe be one of their ancestors. So I thought, hey, yeah, let's do it. You know, that's going to be really, really fun. Anyway, we're here and I'm going to try and win the tournament. We're up against a malicious spearman. Uh, a malicious spearman and I have a spear. At least I do have a little bit of, um, a little bit of polearm skill. Whoa, what's going on? What, who are you and what have you done with Byron? You're actually decent at fighting with spears and shields. What what happened there? I have no idea. But anyway, this is basically just a complete free-for-all tournament going on here. And uh, look at this. Our new companion actually did make it to the next round. Going to be funny to see how he does. And uh, we're going to bet a little bit more here and there. Oh yeah, by the way, thank you very much for letting me know and uh, indeed reminding me about the ability to use smithing to basically smelt a bunch of stuff and then you can sell that stuff for more money than you would have otherwise been able to sell the weapon for. That's actually something that I forgot about because it's been a while with my other series that I've done anything like that because let's face it, I really don't need money with that other playthrough but obviously at this point it's probably going to be a pretty decent idea to try and invest a little bit in uh, some things. That's exactly the reason why I'm trying to be kind of smart about it this time. And I'm not just going to do random stuff. Oh, hello, random stuff. I'm dead. Am I? Uh, yes, no. Dodge him. Dodge him. Yes, okay. No, no. Yes, there we go. I did a nice block. Can you believe it? Oh, we made it. Look at that. I actually blocked with a pole arm. Can you can you believe that? Yes, because obviously, uh, you know, if you uh, if you remember, you know, in uh, if you've seen the other series, then uh, you'll know that I used to be very, very bad at blocking with two handed weapons uh, without a shield. But I'm actually not too bad this time. A little bit. <laughs> still need a little bit of practice, but still doing all right. Not doing too badly. All right, so I'm just going to bet an another little bit. And, uh, oh, here we go. Here we go. All right. Oh, nice. 57 damage. It was in the uh, in the shoulder, though. So if it had been on the head, we probably would have had a nice kill there. But uh, no such luck. I am being very, very risky here. Ooh, he, he, he blocked it. Nice, nice. A little bit of damage there. And I think he's dead. Yep, there we go. Oh, this is this is turning out to be quite an easy uh, easy tournament. I gotta say, I'm actually kind of surprised. I thought we were going to have some issues here, but no. I guess it's because I don't actually need the, uh, the, <laughs> the tournament prize this time around. Because obviously the last time uh, we had a bit of an issue. And obviously the helm just went away and I haven't been able to find it since so that's obviously not very good but ah uh, here we go they've given me a spear and a shield for the final round well this is not going to go well uh, maybe if I uh, maybe if I turn my character a little bit as you can see if you turn your character so that the thrust actually follows the uh, kind of spin of your character it can actually do more damage as a result that seems pretty cool the amount of um well limited speed that you can get in the thrust obviously does make a pretty big difference so if i'm able to do that we might have a shot at defeating this guy nice oh no i thought i got him in the head I thought i got him in the head but he actually uh, he actually got me in the head or in the chest
Oh, we got him. Phew. All right. That was, uh, that was actually a little bit closer than I wanted. Thank you. But there you go. Three renown, a little bit of, uh, a little bit of a horse there. And, uh, we did get some nice money as a result too. Now, I have obviously been attempting to uh, try and get relation as much as I possibly can, but it is quite difficult to do so. And you can see here that if I look a little bit over to the right here, these, or you know, the, the relation that you have with all of these different people indicates what you're actually going to be able to recruit. So I've done obviously a little bit of looking into this, and uh, because obviously with Barney, I didn't really do anything in regards to relation or anything like that. So most of the time I'm recruiting very basic units and not really having any chance of getting anything like uh, this, for example, straight away. So we would need 60 relation with Mangy Yachim to be able to uh, get this Kuzate tribal warrior. And as it stands right now, that's obviously not going to happen in a million years. But it's nice to know that that is actually possible um but obviously at, at this point it's it's just not you know it's just not so i'm gonna look around a little bit more here as well and also we do need to uh, be married to uh, yana yana has actually just been taken prisoner which is actually not very good she is the the new lady by the way that i decided to go for and uh, let me actually just show you here um yeah so this is her we get on much better than Abagai and Byron do because um, when I did the first, uh, the first conversation with her and the first speech checks, she had 94% chance to pass those speech checks. And it was super easy in comparison to Abagai where I had 74% chance. So it is seemingly the case that Yana and Byron are much much more compatible uh, with uh, with everything. So we're going to do something about that. Landlord needs access to the commons. Family feud. No, I'm going to do the, uh, the needs access to the commons. And uh, I might actually send off my companion to do this quest. Because I think that I, I remember this. I recently purchased the right to graze cattle in the nearby pastures from a landowner there, but now some of the villagers are making problems. They claim that I don't have the right to graze there, that village land can't be bought and sold like that. But look, I spent my silver, I won't get it back. Meanwhile, I can't afford to wait. I need someone to ride along with my herders, and my cattle can graze one way or the other, even if it means violence. I can't let my herd just starve. Alright, so I can send my companion and two men, and I think I'm going to do that. So he's going to go off and we'll send, uh, I will send a bunch of tribal warriors and that should be enough to deal with the, uh, the issue. So he's going to go and do that. I hope that he's not going to get bugged like Kiraslava did from our other series, because if Kiras, you know, uh, basically what it meant is if you haven't seen the other series, then I'll just fill you in very quickly. But basically Kiraslava went off on a, on a quest and I wanted to... Um, speak to her about a potential of various things. I wanted to, you know, do things with her like partying and, well, <laughs> you know what I mean. Creating a party with her, not partying as in, yes, let's go out and, and dance and so on. But no, <laughs> not that stuff, but the other stuff, you know, giving her troops and so on. And I wasn't able to do that, unfortunately. By the way, I changed my banner, as you can see. I changed my banner. And uh, for those of you that don't know, Someone actually helped me in the comments uh, about how to find how to change the clan banner. So basically you just go to the clan and you click on the top left here and then you're going to be able to change it very, very easily indeed. So there you go. Otherwise, uh, what else do we have going on here? Okay, so I have found some very, very powerful looters and I didn't really want to fight them just yet. Uh, this guy needs access to the commons as well. I don't really want to do that myself if at all possible. So I'm hopeful that my companion will maybe return soon. And then we can just do it through that. Because having it done automatically through a companion is very, very good in my opinion. It really does make things much, much easier. And uh, all of these weapons that I'm picking up right here, they will be smelted down from now on. But I am going to need to buy some hardwood. And that's going to be maybe a little bit tricky to do. This guy has uh, family feud. 
Uh, I, I, you know, I hate the Family Feud quest, personally. I really do. I feel like I just can never get it to work properly, but maybe I should do it, maybe? Ah, oh, this guy wants his daughter found. Okay, we're definitely going to do this. This is an absolutely amazing quest to do early on. And obviously, after we have completed all of these things, there's no way that I'll be doing any of these ever again. It is literally just for the initial money so that I can invest into a business of some kind. And then we're going to be set for the rest of the game most of the time. Okay. Oh, they're actually here? Are you serious? Wow. Okay. The first village I went to and I found them. All right. So where are they going to be? Uh, they're over in that direction. Ah, now this is actually kind of interesting. I actually thought that we might have some issues here because there are a lot of obstacles in the way. If this guy turns aggressive, then we're going to have a bit of a problem. Anyway, yes, let's see. How do I know he's not forcing you to say that? All right, let's do our uh, little speech checks here. Oh, 84% chance. Wow. Oh, ineffective. Ineffective. All right, that, okay, that's not working. We're, we're, we're done. Uh, I think we're done. He's going to attack. Oh, never mind. Critical success. <laughs> uh, the critical success saves me for, uh, well, uh, the first time, actually. But the critical successes we did actually get in the previous conversations were also very, very nice. So if I had failed the first, the first one, then that would be, you know, pretty good. Anyway, I'm going to do the family feud thing, even though I really don't like it. I feel like it is... I, I don't... I, I just don't like it. I feel like it's very difficult to make it work. But maybe, maybe the reason why it was difficult for me before is because I was just terrible at fighting, and maybe I'm a little bit better at it now. So I have to speak to Baichar and convince him to go to a Sugan of Pabastan. Okay, so where is Baichat? There he is. The new Pelasaur is going to be joining us. Yes. I'm actually not even sure whether that was intended or whether it was a bug because I failed. If you don't know, I failed the Family Feud quest in uh, the other series and uh, this guy called Pelasaur has been in my army ever since. And uh, I know a lot of people wanted me to kick him out, but I kind of thought it would be kind of amusing to uh, keep him around and just see what kind of adventures he, get, he gets up to. And now he's running around with a massive executioner's axe, chopping everyone up and uh, cleaving through enemy lines, albeit not exactly effectively, but he's doing quite a good job. Anyway, who are you? What do you want from me? Well, relax, I've talked with your relative. I know all about the situation. And will you protect me, please? Yes, I will. Well, well, kind of. I, uh, I mean, I kind of, I did keep my promise to Pelasaur, so I guess I will keep this guy's promise as well. But uh, we'll see. There you go. So he's joined our party, and now we have the opportunity to go and speak to the other fellow. Obviously, because I don't have any other companions, this might actually be quite easy for me this time. Because last time I had companions, and I couldn't figure out how to get Pelasaur into the village but i know now how to do it basically you just move the person up in your party screen and uh basically oh wow look at this the northern empire are being absolutely murdered by a whole bunch of kuzates right there very nice indeed wow yeah very nice indeed okay so yeah anyway so this is basically what you do just move him to the top and then he should be able to join you in the uh in the village itself and there he is. Yeah, fantastic. All right, so we have to go and speak to... Uh, ah, ah, there we go. Asugan. Asugan of uh, Pabastan. There he is. He's actually, for some reason, extremely far away. I'm not entirely sure why he would be so far, but I guess that's just how it is. But anyway, I have also been uh, attempting to try and find as many looters as I can get my hands on because obviously auto-resolve with horse archers seems very, very effective, very easy to do. And I'm actually a bit worried about this because you know what's going to happen. Baichar is going to be here. Actually, maybe I can just... No, I, it seems like he is, he is actually going to need to be over here before I can do something. So I'm hopeful that these guys will not be super difficult for me to deal with. Um, as soon as Baichar appears. Hello, there he is. He finally caught up. And there we are. All right. Well, well, what do we got here? Have you come to your own funeral? Wait, we have come to talk. Just listen to us, please. 
Yeah, his voice has changed. <laughs> yes. You evil bastard. I knew we would find you some way. You now you'll be facing justice. All right, hold your horses. Um, <laughs> I will protect the accused until you see reason. Yeah, yeah, okay, there we go. Kill them all. Kill them all, boys. Okay, so I'm just gonna... Oh, wow, there's actually a lot of them. And he's probably going to end up dying as a result of this. Oh, there we go. We don't need to fight any longer. But I... He's dead. Yes. Uh, yeah, okay, well, uh, let me just, let me just, oh, okay, uh, uh, yeah, okay, well, um, it's out in the middle of nowhere, uh, sh 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 just, uh, don't worry about it, it's, uh, it's all good, not a problem, I completed that quest, very nice, Completed it. Very nice. Not ever going to do that quest again. You know that I swore off Family Feud in the in the other in the other series, and I thought to myself, surely it's going to be better this time. Surely, right? Yeah. How wrong I was. How wrong. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, these are the. Wait a minute. I think we might be able to get some Kuzate Noble sons from here if I actually increase the relation with some of these people. But it doesn't look as though they're actually available. As you can see, they just have footmen, horse archers, tribal warriors, and so on. So there's nothing here for me. Uh, I could recruit some more people, but I don't really want to do that. I would like to do another tournament if at all possible. So maybe we'll do that. But uh, we do need to start leveling our forces up quite a bit so I think we'll do the tournament first and then I will try to find some really really high level bandits and I have seen some oh this is actually a really nice helm here for me as well I'm gonna try my hardest in this tournament because getting a helm for me right now would make all the difference as you can see the, the helm I'm currently wearing is kind of awful so it would be nice if we could do it oh Okay, hit my horse. I don't mind. Yep, sure, if you want to hit my horse, then that's absolutely fine. But uh, hopefully I'll be able to do something here. Nice. Oh, I keep... You know, I'm trying to block, like, thrusts and everything by blocking downwards, but it just never works for me. Not entirely sure why that is. But uh, maybe I should just stay out of things until they've killed each other, and then I'll go in, because I'm actually really low in HP right now. Or maybe I can just try and be a little bit on the outskirts here. Do a little bit of damage and then uh, get myself out of it. Okay, that guy's lost his horse. He's going to be a lot harder to kill now. Or maybe not. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, just coming in from the side, you know. Byron from left field. Oh, yeah, he's just all the way out there. Anyway, there you go. Okay, so now we're actually having to fight a Kuzait Darkan. Those guys are actually pretty harsh. I am not entirely pleased with having a Spear and a Shield, as I have voiced before in this series. The Spear and the Shield is, in my opinion, the worst thing that you can fight with. Oh, they're still fighting, eh? Yes, that's exactly my point. Uh, unfortunately, it seems to be a case where you're going to have to be very lucky or you are just going to have to do this and utilize this guy coming in, stabbing him from behind. Hopefully he will kill him. There we go. Nice damage. Nice damage, sir. Uh, I think I'm going to kill this guy. Oh, no, never mind. Apparently I don't need to. Because look at that. I can beat that guy quite easily, but the Dark Khan, that's a different that's a different thing, you know. He, he's he's kind of a beast. So there you go. Alright, so Spear Infantry got through. I'm actually against a raider now, and I <laughs> Oh my, really. Okay, well, I think I might be getting a little better at the whole spear combat thing, but only if the enemy actually lowers the shield for more than a little bit of time. And that actually seems to be working quite nicely here. Oh, no. A little bit of extra damage. There we go. Yeah, he, he basically did not concentrate on defense whatsoever. And that's the whole reason why I'm actually able to beat these guys relatively quickly in comparison to the Dark Khan, for example. The Dark Khan is just too defensive. Very, very defensive. Okay, this could win or lose the round very quickly for me either way. So it's going to be one of those... Uh, I don't really want to take him off his mount. 
So I'm aiming. I was actually aiming upwards, but I apparently hit his horse for some reason. Okay. Nice, nice. Okay. I actually thought I was doing more damage than that, but whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Okay, I've got to be very careful here. Very, very careful. Nice. Wow, 58 damage. Yeah, I, I hit his head. I hit his head, so I guess that's the reason. But wow, was not expecting that much. But there you go. We actually did get a helmet, finally. We actually got a helmet. Can you believe it? Yeah, because the last time, it actually, obviously, as I said before, it crashed, and that uh, prevented me from getting the the reward, because sometimes it doesn't auto-save. But anyway, I'm going to go into the trade screen here. Because I would like to get some more mules, and I do have seven step horses, and I have seven mules as well. I've got 6,000 at the moment, and I think what we're going to do... Oh, yeah, I can't ride this yet. Oh, I need 90 riding skill. Ah, oh, that is going to take me a long time to get that. Wow, now I'm sad. Now I'm sad. It's going to take me so long to be able to ride some really, really nice horses, but oh well. Ah, now look at this. We have a 36 versus 36 battle. And uh, obviously they are looters, so I'm just literally going to send them in. And there you go, 2.7. <laughs> I mean, that was so incredibly easy. And uh, that's the point. I think that's the reason why we definitely have to spec into the, uh, the tactic skill. I feel like the tactic skill makes all the difference in these kinds of situations like you know going in against an equal band of looters and literally obviously because they are looters we are not really losing anything from you know us us doing battle with them because they can only knock us unconscious but in general i haven't actually fought anyone that is harder than that so i think i'm gonna go and try and do that but there are another band of looters over here and i actually do want to go and level these guys up and bear in mind that I actually do think going in manually and fighting in in person without auto-resolving is necessary for me to kind of get used to things. And also to level up my own character, you know, it's kind of needed, you know, get that, uh, get that nice riding skill up, get that bow skill up and so on. That's always going to be required to make a, a better character over time. So I will definitely need to do that, but I guess I just need to find a good balance. Anyway, there's a nearby town. I'm going to sell my prisoners there. Okay, so I feel like this might actually be a good test for my uh, first foray into not fighting looters. So this is going to be nine mountain bandits. There's actually a group of 17 forest bandits relatively close by as well. Uh, someone had a good suggestion as well in the comments. I mean, obviously, there's a whole bunch of good suggestions, but this one in particular, I think, will be quite good and something that I will want to try and implement. But basically what it's about is changing my horse archers to the cavalry tag. I think that is probably going to be something that I will need to do because it will then allow everyone to do what I want them to do. So skirmishing or whatever the case. And it's definitely going to help us. So I'm thinking that that will, that will be something that I'll try to do. And look at the look at Byron. Look at Byron. He's gaining some. He's gaining some tactics. Yes, yes. I, I'm I'm actually kind of surprised because yeah, you know, with with Barney, I literally gained no tactics ever, and uh, <laughs> that that was not exactly great. You know, to literally have a bunch of troops and uh, to have them unable to uh, get me kills or anything like that. And the tactics skill was taking so long to level up, it was just kind of awful. But anyway, I'm going to get out my bow here. Nice headshot. Oh, that was... I'm, I was sure that was a headshot, but no. There's another one. Nice. Oh, riding skill is actually 50, so it's actually not even bad. But obviously, I need to do a little bit of extra work on it to get it to the, the level that I actually want it at. But there you go. That was a very easy victory for us. And wow, look at this. A Highland Furred Cloak. Bidal is actually back now, so I can give him that. And he actually does need some gloves as well. He needs some better boots. And we might as well give him a spear as well. I'm going to take away his um, his other weapon here. Because I personally feel like this is going to be better for him in general. And we'll just take the rest to sell. Uh, I did do a little bit of smithing as well, by the way. And uh, my smithing is now rank 11 or something like that. I mean, obviously, it's not going to be insanely high at the moment. But anyway, we've now reached 50 riding skill. And I will 
be going for the plus three arrows because, well, obviously, I am a horse archer, so we're going to be doing that. And does Bidal need it? Well, I mean, he's just such a beast, isn't he? He doesn't need anything, really. I mean, look at this guy. He's got crazy good skills. So don't think he really needs me to do much for him, apart from get him a bow. He definitely needs a bow. So there you go. There, there are these... Um, these forest bandits here, and I think we're probably going to be fighting them if I can catch up to them, which it shouldn't be taking too long. All right, so we have basically the same green <laughs> as forest bandits. Well, that's kind of amusing. Yeah, so at least we can tell quite easily now that uh, what, what our power level is instead of having uh, black, you know, black background. So uh, here we go. I still have not uh, re-tagged my horse archers as cavalry, so do forgive me. But anyway, we're just going to have these auto-delegate, and we'll have the cavalry charge in as well. I don't even know what our other cavalry is. I assume it's actually Bidal, isn't it? Isn't it him? I think it's Bidal, actually, so there's also that. But uh, yeah, I hope that I won't get absolutely murdered here. My horse archers will most likely be perfectly fine doing what they do. Because, let's face it, they are fantastic. And uh, apparently a bunch of people also told me that arrows, when you are still leveling up your bow skill, travel a bit to the left of your crosshair. So thank you for that, because that's going to be quite, uh, quite useful for me to know where I should aim and all that stuff, even though horse archery, uh, they never really get on with me. I'm never very, very good at horse archery. Like, I can be good if I slow down a little bit, but if I slow down, that's what happens and literally get myself murdered. So I'm just hoping that I will be able to survive. That's literally all I want to do at this point. I just literally want to survive because that's the thing. Horse archery and me, we don't have a good relationship, but I hope that that will mend itself over the course of this series. I feel like in Bannerlord, I'm... I'm being pushed to do things that I wouldn't normally do, you know, because in Warband I would stay away from horse archery as much as I possibly can, don't really like it at all, because it is, in my opinion, either extremely easy, because you have enemies that don't have shields and you can basically just kite them to the ends of the earth and not take any damage, or it is the hardest thing in the world because you get shot by an enemy archer and you just die instantly. That's the kind of experience that I've had in the past. But as you can no doubt tell, the Kuzate, they're doing a very nice job indeed. Oh, look at this. Hello. This is actually a pretty nice bow, and I will be giving this to Bidal. And uh, I do need to get him some better armor. Mm, these... These arrows are not very good for him. What about my arrows? Yeah, my arrows are not very good either. So I'm actually going to take these arrows and, and use those because they have one piercing instead of zero. So I think that could be quite good for us. And I do want to get him a shield as well. As you can see, this is actually a one-handed slash two-handed weapon. So I'd like to get him a shield at some point, but obviously there aren't any shields here at the moment. I can give him a, a new headpiece as well. So I suppose that's okay. Let's uh, just take all of that. That worked out quite nicely. There are eight forest bandits in these hideouts here. And uh, the, the last group is usually consi um, considering? No. The last group is usually made up of the boss of the hideout and a bunch of his lackeys. But that is really not a big deal. That's pretty easy to deal with. So uh, generally, we would only need to fight eight people there. I was actually thinking about taking care of the mountain bandit hideout as well, but I think I'd probably prefer to take out hideouts in Kuzate territory instead. I think that that's probably going to be a better idea. Oh yeah, and in the most recent patch, the developers did add this thing, and it's kind of like an additional way for you to converse or open a dialogue with parties weaker than yourself, most notably looters and bandits of various kinds. So you can say, very well, you may join us, but I'll be keeping an eye on you lot. So in other words, you can hire them into your army. And you think I'm daft? I'm not trusting you an inch. Or no, just justice demands you pay for your crimes. Yeah, we're just going to... I did want to take them down. So we're just going to send the troops and have them win. There we go. Not too difficult. And is there... Ah, very nice. I think this is going to be better 
for him slightly. Yeah, that's pretty good for him. And we will just take the rest and just sell sell that stuff at the nearby town. But yeah, I would like to eliminate hideouts in Kuze territory because that will hopefully increase our relation with the various notables around the area and everything like that. So yeah, anyway, I did buy some hardwood as well from the uh, marketplace here. And that has enabled me to make some charcoal and you know, you know the whole thing with smithing. You know how smithing works if you've seen my other series. And if you don't know how smithing works, I might show you in just a second, because obviously I do want to just rest up a little bit as it is anyway. So let's just go into the smithy here. So basically, if you get hardwood, what you can do is you can then refine the hardwood into charcoal. And you need charcoal for basically everything that you do in the forge. So for example, I have a bunch of stuff here. You, know, you need one charcoal to be able to smelt all this stuff. So if I just do smelt, 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 then boom, there you go. Now I have a whole bunch of wrought iron, crude iron. I've unlocked a bunch of new smithing parts and things. And if I want to, I can also switch to my friend here and he can also do a little bit of smithing for me. So you can see that. Unfortunately, we did run out of charcoal here, so I will now have to make a little bit more. You can also do a bunch of other things like refine charcoal and crude iron into wrought iron and refine charcoal and wrought iron into iron and crude iron. And generally, this is a good way to go doing this one, because, well, obviously, if you have enough, then you can you can do that. But this is generally pretty good to do, because what you will then gain is iron. And usually iron is sold for a very decent amount of money. And uh, that's something that someone told me in the comments and reminded me of. And that's the reason why I, uh, I definitely appreciate that. But there you go. Look at that. We're actually selling all that stuff for almost 800 gold. That's pretty good. That's just the armor. That is just the armor. That's pretty cool. And uh, actually, you know what? I want to see how much the iron actually sells for. Let's see. 170 per one. Wow. That's actually crazy. That is actually a crazy amount of cash. And I think I might actually, uh, I might actually sell that. Yeah, I'm thinking I might actually sell that because look at this. If I sell five of them, I'm going to get 766 gold right there. That is actually pretty crazy. Let's buy some uh, let's buy some hardwood and we're going to gain a little bit of extra stuff there. I'm just going to wait a little bit longer here because I think I might like to do a little bit more smithing because the amount of money that you can gain from this is just crazy good. And to get our first workshop, this is probably going to be quite useful. Uh, I do have a bunch of prisoners as well, actually, so I, I should be able to go and sell those. We're going to be gaining roguery from that as well. Actually, there is someone here. Gweth. Gweth. Okay, so she's got scouting. Uh, she's kind of standard. She's got good polearm skills, but not that much in bows. I would prefer if she had better bow skills, so I'm probably not going to recruit her, but yeah. Anyway, let's go back into the smithy. And we will refine a couple of things. Actually, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, you know what? I'm going to refine with Bidal for the moment. And we're just going to get his smithing skill up a whole bunch, as you can see. And then we will actually just refine um, a little bit here. What do I actually... Yeah, yeah, okay, that's, that's, that's actually pretty good. So let's just do that. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, so I'm going to go away from here. And I'm going to go to uh, Chaikand. Chaikand. I'm going to go over there. Do I have any tasks, by the way, that I need? Yeah, just this one. I will not be able to do that, as I have said before. It is just not possible for me right now. I should not have taken that quest from Misui, because get this. Our new lady, in other words, our new potential wife, Misui is the leader of her family. And I need to ask her... For her support in regards to marriage and that is going to be really 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 awkward if uh, I have uh, just failed a task for her so I probably should have found her beforehand but I wanted to make some money and well I didn't I didn't think I had enough to be able to do that just yet so that's kind of bad anyway we're just gonna sell all the iron that we have right there and we're gonna gain 2,000 gold kind of insane and I think I need about 15,000 to be able to get either a caravan or a workshop. So I will continue trying to, well, tackle these kinds of looters. Steal their weapons and go to the smithy and get some iron as a result. 
So that's uh, that's definitely going to help us. And look at this. My medicine is also going up. I very much like my character build this time around because I actually have an idea as to what I'm doing this time. Because last time, not so much. But it, it, it didn't actually turn out that badly. Barney seems like a pretty effective fighter, at least a little bit. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.